So as you saw, we started getting work done in this living room slash kitchen, basically just strapping and whatnot. And we ordered the drywall and we were gonna keep working, but then this happened. I don't know if you can tell, but those are mechanics out there trying to fix this boom truck. And it looks like they just now got it figured, but now we're too lazy to keep going. So instead of working longer, we're gonna hang out with Corey, who is a photographer, and uh, he has a cool idea that we're gonna try to implement tonight once it gets dark, instead of drywalling. We'll, we'll, dry, we'll, we'll drywall tomorrow. And then there's this guy who I just met. He's a welder. And then, of course, you guys remember Landon. So that's that's what I'm up to this week, drywalling and whatnot. But we're going to try to get some interesting stuffy in, in there as well. I don't know what that was. So what took them so long to bring in all this drywall, which it's not very much, but uh, their boom uh, somehow got stuck up in the air and then they couldn't bring it back down to lift all the material to the door which would have made it way easier door being right there way easier for them to bring everything in because like these are 14s these are 12s and then these, these would have been easy to carry in but Barely. that's a pain so the uh the mechanics did whatever they did to fix it and i think they're gonna be taken off and we are gonna go eat something so we're here at this local restaurant and uh, I asked for a medium rare steak and they gave me medium well. So rather than wait for a new steak, they're gonna give it to me for half price. So I can live with that. We were gonna go to my friend's restaurant, but we decided to come here instead. And uh, I guess half, half off the supper for something that's not as good, but still pretty good. Straight, yeah. straight, right, okay, yeah, no, no, we can do that. You said straight. Yeah, no, that's all good, all good. Keep I, going straight, it's I, good. I it's turned good. my signal light on and you were like, straight? <laughs> wow. Okay, straight's good, straight's real good. What's that? Are you recording? Yeah. Okay. So you scouted out this place? No. Oh. We're going to scout it out. Oh, so you don't actually know if it'll work. <laughs> this, is, this is like either magic or just a complete dud, but I think it's just going to be phenomenal. Okay, okay. King Canyon. We're going to King Canyon. Okay, right here? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. I think there should be a light in the tunnel. Don't you? Oh, they actually, there probably is a light. Actually, well, you never know. Yes, though. I can see the light from here. Oh! Oh, that might not I work can... then. Will it work then? Still? Oh. It won't work. Do you have anything in your car that like, can pull over the top of it? No. Do you have a hammer so we can just smash it? <laughs> <laughs> like oh. it or... I, didn't... I don't have a blanket I didn't in there. They would have a... Oh, you know what? I might have a blanket. I'll see. Well, let's, let's go look at it. Okay, let's look at it first and then we'll see if a, a blanket will even do. Oh. Didn't think that there would be a light. I, I thought maybe one pot light in the center or something that wouldn't actually interfere with the hole. Right. Oh well. All right, so we picked up Corey. We're going obviously over here in the shadow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're going to the. Oh, it's uh, not round. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of light. We. The idea was to do a photo that looks like this, and. Uh, uh, it's not gonna work in here because it's way too bright. That sucks, so we'll do it somewhere else. Let's go to the other side. Dude, the other side is just as light. No. <laughs> On the outside of the tunnel, we're gonna go. That was a joke, son. Oh. Right, it's nice is and there echoey in here. The air, or the, the audio in here is just great. Yeah, you could have a jam session in here. Oh, yeah. You got a guy playing the banjo, a little bit of drums. Yeah, just beautiful. Okay, so this is the other side of the tunnel. Obviously, it's just as bright. That was a joke, but we were thinking about maybe going under here, but it's been too warm lately, so it's it's not frozen. Like, that's a little stream down there. We were thinking about going in that tunnel. Not gonna work, because we'll get soaking wet and then freeze. So we're gonna go into the forest a little bit 
and hopefully no one thinks there's some sketchiness going on. You'll see what I mean very shortly. We're not trying to light a fire. We're not. Right, we're not. No. We're just, we we we're, have lots of snow to put out any fires. Right. So we got we got our steel wool. Steel wool. Yeah. And then this apparatus that I made. And I only used once. So All what right. we're gonna do is we're gonna put the steel wool in here. I'm just gonna angle and then from there we're just gonna Swing it around and stuff, yeah? Yeah. It's like a like a flail with a with a whisk. That's yes, exactly this is yeah. the whisk. Okay, cool. Alright. And then this stuff just lights on fire, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Why? You wanna give her a go? Yeah. Okay. Right. And we'll see what it looks like, you know? It might look super cool. No, it will. So that's basically Right. Okay. Get the snow off there. And then that just lights on fire, just like that. Yeah, as soon as you light it, it sparkles a little bit, and as soon as you start swinging it around, it just kind of... So what the heck is the accelerant? What's in here that's flammable? I don't, I, I just think it's just such fine steel that it just kind of... It just gets, like, a little flame makes it hot. I and guess. then it's like, all right, all right. I was wondering yeah, about an SOS pad. Oxygen. Like, what is an SOS pad? How do you get different colors? I haven't, I haven't searched it, but... All right, cool. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna go random. Oh yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I can see why in a tunnel that would like bounce off everything and look pretty crazy. And it's not it, it doesn't seem too dangerous as you you are like yeah, no. operating it, right? Like, yeah, no, it, not at all. It's very easy. to be into a, uh, an enclosed area like it's not Nah, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. Not scary. I can't even see the I can only see the the actual Thing, you implement. I don't actually see the sparks when I'm out there. Can you guys see the sparks flying around? Or is it too Just at quick? first. Just at first. And then I think that all this is just afterwards when you're... Oh. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Just afterwards when you're just swinging the... Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah, like, I just lit it and then it didn't seem like it was lit, but then as soon as you start yeah, swinging yeah, yeah, yeah. it, just starts sparking. Okay, <laughs> let's find a more enclosed area. And uh, hopefully we can get a cooler effect. All right, guys. I know you can't see me right now, but we're just experimenting here. So Corey is like a, a photographer who does like uh, I don't, a long exposure. Yeah, long exposure work, which is really neat. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna have his information in the in the description so you guys can check him out on Instagram and whatnot. Hey, hold on, hold on, silly. I'm supposed to do it like this. Oh, yeah, backlight. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We already we already got it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Hey, tell me when you're ready. Me? Yeah. I am. Good? Yeah. Ninja. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks cool. <laughs> hit it against something to see if it, yeah. It seems like it sparks when you hit the shit. Oh, oh no, I put it out. There. Okay. Okay. Stop. So if you just set up the camera here, and then if I walk through there but if you have like all these bushes and stuff in the way it'll look like it won't you won't be able to tell that that's a clearing 
and everyone at home watching this has no idea what I'm talking about. So make sure you check out Corey's Instagram because some of these pictures are going to be pretty neat looking if you're into uh, long exposure photography. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. <laughs> now come back. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. You lost it. Yeah. You know what? It does look cool. Especially if you zoom in too to capture just the... Yeah, that actually looks pretty cool. Okay, let's do that again. I have an idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's lots of stars, dude. Dude, I'm getting you. Is that not good for the camera? At first it sparks a lot and then it's just like cold, yeah. right? Yeah. And then that just smells like just it doesn't smell great. Yeah. 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 Right. This is done. That's it? Yeah. Okay, that one got hot. I think because we're not outside. Oh yeah, in the cold winter, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hot. Check that out, it's glowing. It's crazy how that does that. Look at that, it's light again. Filming is gonna be easy. You're gonna be able to see me. Uh, yesterday's photo shoot was pretty fun, I would say. I've never done that before. Uh, I'm not a photographer, so I'm not sure exactly how the pictures will turn out and stuff, but the, the you know, looking at the little screen, they look cool to me. Uh, we went to a few locations. Uh, it was pretty dark, so I didn't really film everything because I didn't, I didn't wanna, you know, fill up the whole video with just black, screen and, and a little bit of talking anyways today we were going to get on to doing drywall you can see that we strapped everything uh, but we've decided since they're landing here making breakfast check out the kitchen beautiful kitchen almost as good as mine uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to be doing uh, the drywall well he's gonna have some other people do the drywall while we do downstairs so yeah, no heavy lifting. Only gonna be doing some framing downstairs, which is gonna be great. Just as we were starting to go downstairs, Corey just shows up. I'm not sure why, but he's here. So I just noticed that I have a little charring on the hat from yesterday. Must have had a spark land on it. But anyways, did you almost just fall? Oh, I stepped. I stepped off of this ladder and I stepped onto this with the. the I hope I got that on. There. I hope I got that on video. Anyways, Corey is here because he finished the pictures and they're awesome. And I just learned something new. So he showed us the pictures. The guy is colorblind. Yes. Which is nuts because the camera, the camera, the pictures look awesome. So what I'm probably going to do is take all these pictures, if you don't mind, and put it on all the black footage that I took last night so people can see what we're actually we're trying to do. Yeah, you just got to time it right. Yeah. The right photo at the right moment. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't film a lot of it. I didn't film a lot of what we did because it was just black. You couldn't see anything. So. Yeah, it was everything was black. Even my camera was picking up pretty dark. So. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, is I'll, I'll try to make it look good. You guys already know. Make sure you follow his Instagram, which I'll have in the description, to see uh, the, re the results for longer than, like, two seconds. Yeah.
Did I bend my elbow? <laughs> Damn it. All right, so we got all the outside walls, frost walls, if you will, all framed up. And now we did everything, you know, kind of step by step, snapping lines, you know, doing the sweeping, snapping lines, uh, laying plates, building the, in, in this case, we don't have a laser uh, level, so we, we built the walls and then stood them up. Then we ram setted them into the ground. That was that little thing that, that uh, we were hammering, that Landon was hammering. And uh, yeah, but we did forget one important step. Well, I forgot one important step, and that was the spacing for the window. I didn't remember that this window was here because of this window. This window was just put in here uh, a few weeks ago. So I totally forgot about this window. It's so small. It doesn't meet egress, which is why this window was put in, but it's tiny. I didn't notice it for some reason. So uh, we're gonna move the, uh, well, this stud for sure over. Move this one over a little bit because Landon has some uh, artistic ideas for this window. So I'm gonna move this one over a little bit. I marked it already and I marked this one as well. So move those over, put in a sill, put in some jacks and then uh, that'll be done. And then we can start on the inside walls, which will be, uh, a little bit different. There'll be doors and stuff and whatnot to think about. So we're gonna do a layout. Well, Landon's gonna do his layout here. It's kind of a design on the fly sort of thing. He has a basic idea of where everything's gonna go. But once we mark out the floor, we'll know exactly where everything goes. While he's doing that, I'm gonna move the window and then we'll have time to do the, uh, the inside walls. It's gonna be a bedroom, a closet, and a bathroom. This used to be a weird layout. There used to be a stairwell there and there's one there, right where Landon is. So it just doesn't make sense to have two stairwells because that one is perfectly good. This one, uh, you had a duck, right? You had a duck to get into it, right? It was, yeah, it was stupid. So got rid of the impractical stairs and then uh, that opens it up to make use of the space more uh, efficiently. I bend it? Just a little bit. Damn it! I don't think it's possible to do without bending your elbow. Ugh, it's much harder with my left hand. Did I bend that one? Probably a lot, eh? No, not really. Not about the same as the other one, really. Okay, well it's eight pounds, so it's not super, super heavy, but that's still difficult. I, I wonder... If I had a lighter one, I want... One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can do it without bending your elbow. Like, what if I just did it with this? No, I can't. I'm, so it must be if you can do it just with holding it with your finger. So your wrist doesn't necessarily bend. I'm gonna break my nose. <laughs> Did I bend it? That was but, last. Okay. That might be impossible for me. Oh, so, got the window in, got the layout more or less laid, and we are ready to start building the walls. And Okay, so we're going along with the walls. You can see we got this really giant walk-in closet done and stuff. Or I don't know if you can see that that well. It's kind of hard to get perception and uh, uh, spatial awareness through a video like this, but uh, that's not what I wanted to show you. I'm nailing along, securing it to the ceiling and stuff, and then I get a jam, and I can't get it unjammed. I'm like pulling on it, and it's stuck on there. This is something that always happens with these coily uh, nail guns, if you're shooting really fast, and that's what happened there, so I'm gonna try to get that undone. The benefit of the coily nailers, rather than the stick ones, is that uh, there's way more ammo in your gun. So, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. Oh, there's two nails in it, in the barrel. So, I got two nails that shot out at the same time somehow. And that is what created the issue. So two heads can't 
pull out of the barrel. I disconnected the air so that we wouldn't have a, an accident with my digits. I didn't want to have another accident with a nail gun. <laughs> One time a long time ago, I shot right in the uh, space between the knuckle right here, all the way through my thumb, except for it didn't break the skin on this side, and it was through a glove. So it was hard to pull out. So we pulled her out. It happened when a safety guy was on site, so I didn't say anything for about half an hour. And I was teaching a guy how to build a wall. And I'm like, all right, this is what you do. You don't want to put your hand here, because you might shoot your where the top plate in the, in the stud goes. I was like, don't put your hand right here, because you might shoot your hand if there's a knot or if you just misjudge where you're shooting. I'm like, hold it back here. And then I shot, and for whatever reason, it skipped, flew along the top of the, or the edge of the board, and then just went straight into my thumb. It hurt like a beast, but uh, I didn't want to say anything, because I didn't want to get kicked off site. I didn't want our crew to get kicked off site, because there's sometimes, safety guys are a little anal about that kind of thing. And, uh, you can uh, get kicked off site for like up to a week sometimes. There we go, got one out. And second one out. Excellent, now I can get back to finish putting up these walls. Here's another common mistake made, and I just made it again. This is where a door is gonna go, so you don't glue where the door is gonna go because you're gonna cut out the sill. Oftentimes, you'll even, uh, uh, not put the whole bottom plate on but in this case it was just to map out because we didn't know where the doors were gonna go exactly so yeah all this glue is gonna be on the floor luckily it's gonna be covered but it's not the first time this mistake was made today we also did it with this door that door and this door so that makes all the doors so far <laughs> the next door which doesn't exist in this basement won't have that problem all right, so framing along, just thought here's a quick tip, thought I would point out. We have our walls. Now I know this is a little difficult to see, but this is a door, we have a wall, and then this is a door right here. And this is the bedroom uh, door, and then that's the closet door. Now, we were just framing along, just paying attention to our stud centers, and didn't realize that we wouldn't have any backing here. So this sheet of drywall, is not gonna have anything to screw on right here. So if this ever happens to you, what you can do, which this may, this it's pretty obvious, but oftentimes people will just cut a, a whole stud uh, when it's not necessary. Just go to your cut station, and underneath your saw, you will have several blocks at different lengths usually. Uh, I usually take the longest block, or a couple, depending on what your needs are, you just be the judge, and then you can nail it to your existing studs and then you have backing, something to screw your drywall onto. So, just just a quick tip. We have one last door and we're not gonna glue it by accident. <laughs> oh shoot, didn't mark it. Yeah. If it's not one thing, it's another. That's just the way li life is, you know? Excellent, excellent. So this is our final wall before our final wall, the big one. So we're gonna do the big one last just cause it makes sense to do it last. There will eventually be another wall here cause this is gonna be a bathroom and utility room. But since it's currently a laundry room slash storage room, uh, there won't be a wall made, made here. So we're just gonna put in that one last wall there, but it won't fit because of the light and that piece of steel framing. Like I said, if it's not one thing, it's another. But we gotta act fast and stop talking to the camera because uh, the, P Whoa. the PL sets quickly. So, gotta quickly yank this down. Don't wanna smash it either because we don't have much light down here.
right, we are done. Now, it's just a skeleton, so it's kind of hard to get perspective, but there's quite a bit of work done here today. Of course, we did take a break and we had a, a lunch and whatnot, and we went around gallivanting around town, uh, w went and saw some spots and whatnot. I didn't show that, but if we come upstairs, let's see the progress that the boarders made today. They basically did nothing because they didn't come today. Uh, the one guy had to work and uh, so he couldn't come here because his real job pays uh, probably a little better. I don't know. Uh, so now we are going to watch the Euler game. Although Landon is a Calgary fan. What the heck? Um, go Oilers. Another win in the bag. My tip is broken. That's why I'm not for the part time. I'm just going to quickly switch this out. Alright, this should work. Sorry that took so long. Got a new one in there. What the heck? You finished it? Alright. Easy enough. Let's go for lunch then. And like a quick, healthy lunch to get you back and energized, ready to work again. It'd be nice. Oh, almost dropped my pie. That would have been bad. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. It would be nice if it was already done, like, uh, thank you. If it was done, like, the last gag. What the heck? When did you, when did you, this is what took you so long to get to the car? Check this out, it's already done. Well, that takes care of a couple things. Huh. All right, so obviously the board wasn't put up by itself. We are doing the board. In fact, we're still doing it. I mean, this is in the past from the clip you just saw. Uh, we're doing the walls. You already saw the completed ceiling. Uh, I had to put a stand-up board in here, and it's a 54 inch, so it's wider and all that sort of thing. I like to hang my boards vertical if, uh, if it means less taping, so there's no seam here. So rather than put two eights there, I just put 154 there, and then there's a small butt there or a small flat, I guess it would be, and, uh, and and no flat here, which is really easy. But to do that, I had to move this stud, and uh, this doesn't happen too often, so I moved this stud out of the way, and as I was putting it back, I thought I had all this, you see that? I thought it was PL, and if you remember from a while ago, I had the PL stuck on my hand for days, and I was like, dang it, I hate getting PL on my hands. But you know what it actually was? Sap. So you can see how this sap bubble Traveled all the way from this little, uh, let's see if I can open it, this little crack in the wood. I just thought that was neat, so I wanted to share it uh, with you. These are probably pine or spruce uh, two by fours here. So it, it's what's called uh, or known as SPF, spruce pine fir. I'm pretty sure this is spruce but it could be pine. It's probably not fir. We don't have too many fir trees around grown for uh, lumber anymore. But yeah, I just thought that was neat, so I thought I would thought I would show you. Still have a little ways to go. Um, still gotta poly this wall, you know, board a couple walls here, and uh, the way that I do board counts is I try to use up every bit of scrap without compromising on the amount of uh, uh, taping efficiency there will be. So what, what's an example of that? So instead of using, for example, in this closet, a piece that goes across and two pieces of scrap or two random pieces cut off here, um, and then again in the inside of that closet, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use three pieces of uh, four by eight. So to do the inside and the outside of this wall right here, 
I'm going to use three pieces and the leftovers, the leftovers I'm going to use for here. And that's going to be for this little wall and then this little wall. And that's going to be a uh, uh, stand up sort of situation so that there's no seams in the middle similar to this. So since this wall was too wide to do a stand up, I had to go vertical. And uh, depends on who you are, if you agree with going vertical or horizontal. Uh, I've been doing drywall like this for years, never had a problem. In fact, I worked for one of the biggest uh, drywall companies in Alberta as a subcontractor for a while. And this is exactly how we did it when I was working for them. Uh, well, for them as a sub. And uh, that's where I started learning the tape when I learned from Steve, who you met in a previous vlog. Anyways, enough talking. I'm going to get back to hanging this board because it's not going to do it itself. Although I hurt my neck today hanging up a board over here. I tried to like move it over with my head and uh, it just cranked my neck really weird. Cranked is probably not a word, but that's what it felt like. So hot shower after this to help it relax, I think. <laughs> All right. So a little bit uh, further on the progress, we're looking pretty good. We have just a few little things which take forever all the time. So remember I was explaining this little L and then the back closet, how I'm gonna be using um, three sheets to do those little bits there. And then also, I don't know if I explained this, but the middle parts will be used for other stuff or it might become scrap. I always try to use the least amount of scrap possible. Anyways, there is a hazard with having your board piled on the floor like this. We're done with the nine, so this pile's missing. But sometimes when you're cutting, uh, when it's stacked, you're cutting through one, you may accidentally cut into the next one. So look at this piece right here, it looks pretty good, except for, bam, I cut through it a little bit, and then when I smacked the back, she opened up. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to get around that. If your top paper isn't compromised and all your gyp rock is still nice and solid for the most part, this is what you can do to solve it so you don't have to go and cut a whole new sheet or make a seam where you don't want there to be a seam and it cuts down on the tape. So what you can do, take uh, your PL product, in this case I'm just using PL 400 because that's what we have and it's more than good enough. This is a, a deck and subfloor glue. You can use PL 200 even. Whatever is gonna stick your drywall back together. So just put a bead in there, like so. Squeeze it shut. You should have a decent amount of squeeze out, which is good. And then to hold it, because it takes about 20 minutes to set, and about 24 hours to here, take some tuck tape, in this case, and get it as tight as you can. And then you have a nice, strong piece of board again. And then you can just hang this up on the wall and you will be golden. Bam, installed and looking great. Now, it doesn't work every time, if, especially if you don't use the glue process, so you do want to have a look at it uh, after you tape it, after you prime it. Primer will bring out basically any flaw in, in your drywall, so always do a light check or whatever. And if it does come to be that the flaw shows up, basically all you got to do is just cut it open from this side and then tape it, skim it out, and then you should be good. Well, don't just skim it out, but fully do the whole three step process, whatever. Here you can see, as I was explaining, uh, I put on, I used three sheets here, and then the scrap went over here to fill out this L. I hung them vertically so that that was possible. Not only did it make uh, it more efficient for material, it also is gonna make it more efficient for my taping work, as I only have one seam right here rather than a little seam here and here. So one seam versus two seams, always better. The way I do my board count is I always try to get the longest material for the least amount of seams. 
which seems obvious, but a lot of people will just throw up eights because it's easier to hang eights rather than go like on their ceiling. We did 14s and 12s. It's a little heavier, but it's still, you know, manageable. But if you want to do it by yourself or whatever the reason is, have it easier on your back or whatever, or in my case on your neck, uh, people will just do eights. That just creates a lot more work and it's way harder to make a nice uh, clean flat ceiling, uh, in my opinion anyways. So uh, another thing that I do, if you come in here, you will see this wall here is a five foot wall. Uh, I didn't hang them vertically because it wouldn't make sense to do that. It's This is a smaller seam this way than it would be going vertically, but uh, that's not what I wanted to say. Instead of using eights in here, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six eights. This is a five foot wall. That's a five foot wall and then a five foot ceiling. Instead of using the six eights, I just used uh, 110 here, cut it in half, bam, five and five. Ceiling and that wall, same thing. Uh, so instead of having uh, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 feet of waste, I have zero waste, if that makes sense, using us, uh, because it's a five foot wall, using tens rather than eights, right? So an eight, I would have to cut, cut down to five feet. That's three feet of extra that I can't use anywhere else in this project. If I could use it elsewhere, then maybe I would have used eights, but in this case, I couldn't. So the most efficient thing to do was to buy a 10, cut that in half, Bam, two fives. Now we're on this wall. This is longer than five feet. Uh, so I usually, the case would be that I would hang something vertically here, but you notice there's no seam. There's a little seam up there. Since the door is so far that way, I had to use a 54 inch and you want your seam to be above a door. This is non-structural, so it's not nearly as important. If it was structural, you definitely want your seam to be maybe a little bit further and that's just so that it doesn't crack as the house moves and stuff. This is an old house so it's not likely to do much moving for the rest of its life but that's just just in case. Usually you want your seams to be in the middle of your doorway instead of right on the side which you see oftentimes, especially nowadays because uh, borders don't get paid very much. They just whatever's easiest and quickest right and there's often a seam right on the doors going straight up here. It's moved over a little bit, so it takes care of that. Although this is not structural, so it's not as important. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, over here, the scrap that I used on the closet over there was used here, and then the doorway scrap, which would have been shorter, right? Because this is a full height, over there is a full height, but the inside door part, uh, we used for the inside of this closet. And then we had more scrap here from these doors, which we used up here. And uh, then we obviously had waste that we had to take away, but it's way less waste than what we would have had if we would have used uh, just eights or whatever and hung everything horizontally. Uh, if you're of the school that you shouldn't hang things horizontally, or sorry, vertically, if you're of the school that you shouldn't hang things uh, vertically, I'm not sure why that it seems to be an issue for some people. That's the way that I've uh, been taught and I've always done it, never had a problem with it. You'll see it oftentimes in commercial and uh, uh, industrial builds. That's more so of a, of a fire thing. Um, like, let me show you. So over here, we have a horizontal seam. Now behind here, this is a stud, obviously where the screws are, but, but behind here, there's no wood. So fire can easierly, easierly, more easily breathe. There's, cause there's air behind there. But in an in industrial setting, uh, this would be hung vertically, which would have no seams here. And then therefore fire couldn't get in there. If it was a really tall wall, there would be ceilings, but they would put blocking in there and you would put blocking in there anyways because it, it it's a tall wall it needs blocking so that the spacing stays correct they also do that in uh, certain residential applications such as duplexes oftentimes the drywall will be hung vertically in there on the party wall so that there isn't uh as bad of a fire hazard, right? You, you want the best fire break possible and usually it's double layered drywall as well Anyways, they always do, uh, they, they, 
it's it's crazy how they do it. they fire tape the first layer put on the second it's a whole thing maybe i'll have a project in the future where i can show where that uh, comes into play basically my point is is that i want to do the least amount of work possible have the least amount of waste at the end of the day and that way you save money because your board count is the same right so everything that you would charge for is the same but you buy less material usually and if you buy less material, obviously you save money. And then with less waste, you have less to bring to the dump. And then you spend less on your on your waste fees and weight fee at the at the dump. And plus it's better for the planet. So always use less if you can, right? It just makes sense. Of course, practicality comes into it sometimes. And uh, sometimes it's just not practical to do things a certain way. But if you can, you should. And I mean, I hate taping, so doing it this way is just way better for, for me as a taper because there's less work to do, less sanding. I hate sanding. Now, speaking of taping, that's the next process here. And uh, it looks like it's late, but it's not that late. It gets dark here really quickly. I'm not sure if I want to tape tonight because I wanted to do something else instead of work all day um i don't know we'll see we're gonna stop to get a bite to eat and then we'll see if we want it after although my joke from a few clips back won't work if i do that because i didn't think of that joke until after i had already did the well i have to wait till tomorrow to do it i don't know how to explain this because again the time warp I'm going to be coming home from lunch saying, I hope that all the boarding is done and then bam, it's going to be all done. <laughs> so I have to film that tomorrow because I didn't think about it until after. And plus we just finished boarding and it's dark outside. So the continuity thing is not going to make any sense. And now that I'm explaining it, I've already ruined the joke, but it's after the joke. So it'll be fine. Also, just in case you're curious about this, I don't know if this popped up. We didn't board this because look at this rat's nest. So <laughs> that has to be taken care of. This is very similar to my house. This was also foreclosure and there was also weird renos done in the, in the building. So a lot of stuff has to be taken care of. And uh, I'm not an electrician. Landon's not an electrician. So we got to uh, wait for that to be done before we can close that wall up. And then we will be golden. Anyways, I think I've rambled on for too long here. So let's see what the next thing on the agenda is. You'll see right now. So here we are this morning. Landon's there doing prep and whatnot. I am being somewhat lazy. Just filmed that little segment, if you remember from earlier, that I had to do to make the gag work, which hopefully it does work because that <laughs> I'm not a good actor. Uh, ouch. Oh, speaking of ouch, every time I do a little weird crickety crick, I get like this weird uh, pain twinge. So yesterday I ended up doing a, a little massage thing on my on my neck thing. But do you see how my stance is? Let's see if you can. Do you see how much lower the shoulder is than this one? And like that's just trying to relax. Anyways, Landon has like this massage video that I was trying to massage the uh, pain out of, I don't know what it is, I'm not sure. Maybe during our lunch break, I will head over to a chiropractor. If there's a walk-in, I'll, I'll do some calls this morning and hopefully I can get in and then maybe they can just crack it back into normalness or something, I don't know. <laughs> I'll try. But in the meantime, I'm gonna do some taping here. The uh, taping tools kinda require a lot of shoulder work if you're using the, the machines and if you're you're doing it by hand as well. We're gonna use the machines because it's faster. So I might have to be a little careful and delicate with it, which is fine. Or we can just switch off. Landon can do the tools. I can do the the cleanup behind, get rid of the slugs and whatnot. And oh, check out my uh, cat that looks like Garfield that I drew on this one. Uh, we didn't put this one up because he stubbed his toe, so. It's just a piece of scrap now, but it would have been funny to put that up, although it would have been painted over. If you've followed me for a while on my social media and on YouTube, you already know about the cats that look like Garfield. 
Uh, anyways, we're going to get started with the uh, with the taping, I guess. Makes sense. We uh, realize that we don't have enough buckets, so we will have to go get a bucket right away here too. I only brought water buckets rather than than water and mud buckets, which you need mud buckets to mix the mud in. Makes sense, right? Okay, so since the sink is you know at sink level and uh, my bucket is going to be heavy full of water and I don't want to make my neck even worse we come up with a little bit of a solution this is some old uh, vacuum like internal vac tubing I guess you could call it tubing PVC what is this made out of who cares I'm gonna set this on the faucet and I'm gonna let it run out into my bucket and that way I don't have to lift up anything genius right Bam, bam, bam. Nice. Fill it up with warm water and we're off to the races. So oftentimes when you lend your tools out, you have a problem with tools not coming back. In my case, I gained one. I haven't used these tools since they were given back to me, but I gained a eight inch box. I uh, only own a 10 inch and a 12 inch, so I gotta give that back because I stole it. Stealing's not the right word, but it's also not the wrong word if I keep it. Um, so I gotta make sure I give that back to the last person who borrowed these, although maybe they're not the ones who gave it to me. Maybe it was the people before I lent these to who put it, I don't know. I haven't used these in a while and I lend them out because taping tools are expensive, so a lot of tapers will just hand tape, but if they can get their hands on machines, it's it's way it's way better because it's way faster. Um, I don't know who owns this, but it's not me. It doesn't usually work that way. Usually you lose tools, not gain them. All right, so I managed to get a uh, chiropractor appointment set up. So before we do the taping, we are gonna go get this adjustment done because, oh, that is bright. Oh, I forgot my jacket. Don't wanna be caught outside in Alberta weather without a jacket. It's pretty warm today, but it still can be an issue if uh, the temperature drops. I mean, it's Canada, more namely Alberta. Weather changes every 10 minutes. Huh. Okay, taping is done. I don't have time for this. Just gotta go get this adjustment. Ow, frick. Gotta be careful, I keep forgetting about the, the old neck. Man, I feel way better now. Like, my range of motion, so good. Still a little sore, but not that, like, seizing pain. You know, the pain where, like, when you feel it, your whole body goes stiff because it hurts so much. That's gone. I think I'll do a couple more adjustments when I get home. I'll make a couple appointments just to make sure that it's going to be good. But man, I love going to the chiropractor. I haven't gone in years. Um, but yeah, I've gone to it. Pain is gone. Uh, I do have some lower back pain, uh, which sucks. That started today. But I think that stems from an injury I had from a while ago. Basically, uh, I was trying to move, well, I did move a 418 pound bathtub by myself and loaded it into my truck. I tried to get it out of the bathroom. Here's a picture of me trying to do that. It was so heavy, I had to use every bit of leverage I could and it was such tight quarters trying to get it out. And I didn't realize at the time that you could smash apart cast iron. I didn't know that it broke easily. But anyways, I lifted that into my truck and then we brought it to the dump and then uh, that lifting there caused this lower back pain that's kind of comes and goes as I uh, do whatever so sometimes it just is just a little bending over sometimes it's lifting something and then it'll just be there and it goes away after a while but I'll see if I can go get that figured out as well because like I mean just one session with my neck so good I forgot how well it was and I should say I don't go to one of those weird woo-woo chiropractors. I'm not sure why those are even called chiropractors. You know what I'm talking about, right? The stuff that, the weird stuff that you hear about. Like, like uh, 
praying to squirrels and like dancing around campfires naked and taking potions. I don't know. Whatever that weird stuff is, I don't I don't do that. Where I go, they just crack your joints and massage you and then you're on your way. There's no need to like stomp on raven beaks on your way in or out. It's I don't I don't understand why anyone falls for that kind of stuff, but whatever. Anyways, I'm back at Landon's. I'm going to head in and uh we I think we're going to go meet up with someone else. We'll see an artist that you met in a previous vlog shortly. Um we'll hang out. He works at the museum, so I wanted to check out the museum. Hopefully it isn't closed yet. But then in the evening we're going to do first coat of mud on the joints that we just Hey, joints. I just got, got stuff done with joints. Drywall joints. My joints got screwed up because of I was trying to make a joint in the ceiling smaller. Man. Nah, that's too much. That's, uh, that's, that's too much of an Alex thing. I can't do the puns like Alex can. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to head in. Hey, do you guys remember Mike? I introduced him, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe a couple months ago or something like that. In the summer, in the summer. He, uh, he has a lot of artwork in, in here. Uh, this is a comic book store slash cafe, coffee shop sort of thing. He also did a big mural on the outside of the wall. Anyways, we had a, a bit of a meeting here, I guess. Not like a hangout sesh. We've decided, uh, we announced earlier in the last vlog that he was in that we were going to do some uh, collaborations and now we've actually sat down and decided what we're going to do sort of we were thinking about maybe doing some sculpture uh, a painting we we kind of did a rough sketch well we each did sort of a rough sketch of well, some ideas we had based on on a on a like a an idea that we both like and then we kind of did did a rough sketch on those and then, uh, yeah, I think I think I'm happy with what we have planned. It's not exact just yet, but I don't know. We both like pop culture, so this is going to be a pop culture esque type painting, and uh, it's going to kind of showcase both of our different individual styles. So I don't know. I'm pretty stoked about it. And uh, yeah, it should be it should be good. It's cool when you get to meet other artists who are who are down to collaborate with just because your own style doesn't necessarily um, bring everything to the table for a certain piece so I'm I'm yeah I'm happy with this because your style and my style mix will make this piece kind of come together so stay tuned for that if uh, if people want to follow you on your social medias how can they reach you sing Right. That happens all the time. People don't know their own social media because they don't follow themselves. I will put your stuff in the description and then everyone can uh, can check you out if they want. Um, he works at the museum, so he's got a cool job and stuff. It allows him to stay creative. So check out his social media, see the art that he's creating. It's uh, It's pretty cool. Man, I can't believe I had this on here for a whole month. <laughs> Finally, it is time to get rid of the scruff. It looks super ugly, in my opinion. Some people liked it, which is surprising. I'm pretty sure they're just being nice, but, you know, it is what it is. So, the whole thing, the whole grow op, if you will, <laughs> was uh, an effort to raise awareness and maybe I did do that, hopefully I did and in turn a few bucks for men's health research specifically <laughs> prostate cancer and personally I'm going to donate uh, oh I have an 
idea. I have an idea.